The other week I had a project where I wanted to create some particle simulations, but I wanted them to look like a slow motion video where they start fast and then slow down for a moment, and then speed back up to resolve. I thought this would be easy, but particle flow in 3ds Max doesn't really play nicely with the retiming tools. It took me a bit of digging to find an answer, so I thought I'd make a walkthrough to share what I found. First I'll show the easy way using a paid plugin, and then I'll also show you how you can do it for free with a few limitations. First, the quick version for busy people. Make your particle system and simulate it as close to slow motion as you can. Buy the Super Mesher plugin by Boomer Labs and create a Super Mesher in your scene. Turn on the interpolate settings, set the frame range and other settings to be the way you want, then hit record to cache your particle system to a file. Change the time setting to use track view. Find that track in the curve editor and add keys to make your animation speed up and slow down the way you want it. If your particle system keeps the same number of particles the whole time, you can skip buying Super Mesher by just using a regular mesher with a point cache modifier. Save the cache, then convert the mesher to an editable poly, then add another point cache and load the cache you just saved. Change the playback type to playback graph, and boom, time control. Now for the rest of us who have our lives in utter shambles, let's take a deeper look through the whole process. Here's the effect we're going to create. Notice how time slows down and then speeds up. Later in the video I'll show you a quick setup for creating particle simulations for meshes like this because it's kind of fun to just play around using different forces and collision objects, but for now we're just going to take a look at how to retime the simulation. To demonstrate the problem, here's a typical scene with some blocks and a camera that move a little across 20 frames. In this case we can just go into the curve editor and use the retime all tool to slow down time in our scene, but my particle system isn't affected by the retiming. Now here's the secret to creating slow motion video. Don't retime a fast animation to be slow motion. Instead, simulate it at a medium or slow speed, as close to slow motion as you can without breaking the physics, and then retime it to speed up the regular speed parts. This way you'll avoid a lot of interpolation weirdness from the computer trying to invent too much between frames, and you'll have more control over what your animation will look like in the end. The easiest way to get it working for most particle systems is to buy a plugin called Super Mesher. You can find it at boomerlabs.com under the products section. Unfortunately, the slow motion tools we will be using are deactivated in the demo version, so you kind of have to buy it to try it. We'll load our scene with the crumbling cat statue. It's simulated at a moderate speed, not super low, but slower than real time. Using Super Mesher is really easy. The hard part is just finding it. It's under the Create menu in Compound Objects. Click it and drag a super mesher out anywhere to the side of your scene. In the settings, turn on interpolate for both the display and render sections. For the source, add your particle flow source and it will automatically add all the events within that source. Make sure you use all pflow events as active unless you want to just record specific events. I'm going to record everything from frame 0 to 100. Make sure you hide particles before birth and after death if those are relevant to your simulation, and you can use the viewport mesh if you want. Click record and choose a location for your cache. It will immediately begin recording and could take a while depending on the complexity of your particle simulation. When finished, open Particle View and turn off your particle source. Now you can scrub through your timeline and it will play back smoothly. If it's frozen on a single frame, the time setting might be on Use Track View. If you need to change anything, all you have to do is turn your particle system back on, make your changes, and click the record button again in the super mesher. Now we can start retiming our animation. When it looks the way you want, change the Super Mesher's time setting from Time Offset to Use Track View. This lets you control the speed through the Curve Editor, and earlier we set it to be able to interpolate between frames for slow motion. You'll notice if you scrub the timeline, it doesn't do anything. This is because our Track View animation doesn't have any information in it. With your Super Mesher selected, open the Curve Editor and find the Track View Frame channel. Using the Add Keys button, we'll add a key to the first and last frames we recorded. In my case, it's 0 to 100. Go back to the Move Keys tool, select the first key, and make it a value of 0 at frame 0. Then select the second key and make it a value of 100 at frame 100, or whatever your final frame is. Select both keys and make them linear. Now if you scrub your timeline, you'll see the animation is back to normal. Also a quick tip, if you hold the Ctrl and Alt keys and drag around with the middle mouse button, you can stretch your curves around to view them more easily. Scrub through your animation and find the frames you want to stretch out into slow motion. In the Curve Editor, make two new keyframes at the beginning and end of that section. Now take the last two keys and slide them way down to stretch out the time between the two middle ones. You can set the keys to linear for immediate slow motion, but I'm going to adjust the curve so it gradually slows into slow motion and ramps back up out of it. Steeper graph lines mean faster movement, flatter graph lines mean slower movement, and how high the line gets just represents how far along your animation is. Play around with it and see what you can do. Now there are a few limitations that I know of with this process. 
First, the interpolation can only create linear movement between frames. As you can see in this example, these swirling particles are moving way too fast. The movement becomes angular when slowed down too much. So be careful when slowing down your animation. It's better to speed it up than to slow it down. Here's another problem example. Supermesher can only interpolate between consistent geometry. Since this mesh is being ripped apart, the vertex IDs are continually changing, so it can't interpolate between some of the frames, and the playback is choppy. In this case, the only option would be to simulate the entire thing in the full slow motion, and then retime it to speed up. In my slow motion scenes, I usually just hand animate a camera to roughly match the slow motion effect. But sometimes you might want to synchronize a slow motion effect in an entire scene full of objects and cameras. The easiest way I know to do this is to use the Retime All tool in the graph editor, because it affects all objects in your scene, including supermesher objects, and you can turn it on and off to keep your original animation. The only weird thing I ran into is that I couldn't for the life of me find the buttons in the curve editor. Every tutorial I watched showed them right here, but lucky me, I don't see them. So I cheated and added them as a custom hotkey so I can just press Ctrl Shift R in the curve editor to bring up the Retime All tool. You can do this too by going to the Customize menu, Hotkey Editor, Track View Group, Retime All tool, and assign a key combination. Anyway, once you have the tool active, you can double click in two places on your timeline and then drag the bars around to stretch out your animation. You can kind of fake an ease in and out effect with multiple bars, but it's not as smooth as Bezier curves. But yeah, if you do this, you'll see that the entire scene with cameras and objects and everything slows down and speeds up together. There is a way to do this same thing for free with the built-in tools in 3ds Max, but it only works for particle systems that keep the exact same number of vertices throughout the entire simulation. Anything that spawns new particles or deletes particles after the first frame will not work. We have a scene here with just a default M particles flow. Create a mesher compound object and mesh your particle system. Add a point cache modifier to the mesher. Create a new file and choose a location to save the point cache, set the frame range you want to record, and then click the record button. If the cache info says something about how the number of points in the mesh doesn't match the cache, then your particle system is either spawning or destroying particles and won't work for this. Convert the mesher object into an editable poly. This stops it from referencing your particle system. Add another point cache modifier and load the cache you just recorded. Now you can turn off or even delete your particle flow. In the point cache settings, change the playback type to playback graph and add keys to make frame 0 at frame 0 and your last frame too. In my case, it's 100 on frame 100. Make the keys linear for a normal playback. Now you can use the retiming tool or adjust curves manually to create the slow motion effect. If you need to have particles be created or destroyed, you'll have to get creative using a mesher and a point cache for each section of particles and manually animate the visibility so they only show up when they're supposed to. I expect there will also be a bit of a nightmare getting it to cache the right frames so there isn't a point count discrepancy before or after the particles exist, but it's free, so good luck. That should be enough to get you playing around with retiming your animations. So now let's change gears and take a look at some particle simulation stuff, just because it's fun. There are already plenty of tutorials on how to do this though, so I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. Using whatever mesh you want, name it something like Fragments. Make sure nothing else in your scene has that name. Run the Fracture Voronoi script, available for free at scriptspot.com, to break your mesh into some chunks. You can start with just a few and then target important areas to break into smaller chunks if you want. Unhide and rename or delete the original object, then select all the fragments and center pivots and reset transforms. Press 6 to open Particle View. I like to start with the standard M particles flow since they use the Mass Effect Simulation Engine for better collisions. Replace the birth grid with the birth script and delete shape and spin. Set the MP shape to collide as a convex hull with an inflate width of zero. Open the birth script, edit script, clear all, and then either type the script you see on the screen now, or maybe I'll have it in the description or something for you to copy and paste if the formatting allows it. Anyway, figure out a way to get that into your birth script, and then find where it says dollar sign text star and change it to be dollar sign fragments star to let the particle system know to use all your meshes in the scene that have names starting with fragments. Then close the birth script window. In your layers, hide the original fragments layer, but don't delete them because they are being referenced by the particle system. Now we can just have fun with it. You can edit your gravity and the ground, or add forces. Be sure to use the MP force operator though, and not the regular force one. And you can have animated objects interact with your particles by adding a PFlow collision shape modifier and including them in an MP collision in your particle event. And it's fun to play with the MP glue operator to make your particles stick together until they're broken apart by collisions or forces. Nice, now you can convert any mesh into a particle simulation and play around with objects and forces. And don't forget to make all your projects slow motion from now on.